Welcome to the Young Storytellers Club. Ooh. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another week with the Youth Storyteller Group. I'm Randy, and I'm one of the four mentors with the Young Storytellers Group. Hi, my name is Madeline, and it's nice to have you all back. Hey, everyone. I hope you're excited for this week's topic, because I definitely am. My name is Cleo, and I'm ready to get started. Hey, everyone. I'm Elise, and we are glad that you are watching this. We have exciting things planned for this meeting, so let's jump in. This week, we are starting our first adventure at the zoo. But before we get into that, we should introduce our characters again and talk about scenario building. That's a good idea. Who wants to start? I can start. My character's name is Mauro. He is 11 years old, and whenever he feels bad, he becomes invisible. Um, so he doesn't have a lot of self-control yet over his superpower. My character's name is Sage, and she is 16 years old. She's from Chicago, and her father was a superhero, and her special power is to know when people are going to do bad things that could harm others. Her role is to help prevent those things from happening, to save the day and the world. Uh, Clarion is my character and is 14 years old. Instead of he or she, they prefer using they to refer to themselves. Their special power allows them to manipulate minds, but Clarion doesn't like to use it. They'll only use it at the most desperate times to help others. My character's name is Jojo, and she's 17 years old, and her superpower is that no one can say no to her. This allows her to get, a, get what she wants in order to fix, fix the situation. As mentioned in our meeting about story building, all of our characters met at a school for kids with special powers. Though we all may be in different places and grades, something pulled us all together. Friendship. Yes, we are all friends and team members. We have bonded through our desire to make the world a better place. Yep, and for those of you watching, take a moment to think of your character. What is their superpower? What kind of person are they? What kind of goals do they have? On that note, let's begin our lesson for this meeting. Okay, so in the Young Storytellers Club so far, we have talked a lot about creating characters and two weeks ago about the setting for a story. We mentioned that the third element of a story is the scenario. Yep, but you could use other words for this too. It's the action, the plot, what happens in the story, the events. Um, in some ways, the scenario or the plot is really the story itself. Specifically, it detailed, it's a detailed description of what is happening. Most stories are built up the same way. This is called the story arc. The word arc means bow or curved shape, like this bow here in the middle. So as you can see in this picture, an arc is something that goes up and then back down. So as you can see as well, at the start of the story, there's a part that's a little bit flat. That's the introduction of the story. Hey, typically in the introduction, stories cover things we talked about in the last two lessons. So you get to know the characters and the setting of the story. And then something happens. It can be anything, a problem, an incident, a mystery, something that needs to be solved. Um, I'm not sure if I understand what you mean by that. Like, anything can happen? Okay, so let's work through a couple of example stories together to see if we can figure out what the event is that triggers the scenario that has to be solved. Let's go back to our very first example, the cat in the hat. Oh, let me see if I can remember that story. Okay, there are two kids in a rainy house and they are bored. And then a crazy cat in a hat comes in and does all sorts of tricks. He knows that the kids are bored, so he releases thing one and thing two into the house. Thing one and two make a terrible mess of the house. 
then the kids realize that mom is about to come home, but the house is still a terrible mess and they don't know how to clean it before mom gets home. The cat in the hat catches thing one and thing two so that they stop making a mess and goes to put them away. Yeah, and then just as the mom is about to come home, the cat in the hat races through the house and cleans it up really, really quickly. So when the mom comes home, the house is clean again and she doesn't even know that there was even a mess. So the kids are relieved about that and their afternoon was not that boring at all. Right, so if we had to point at one specific event in there as the beginning of the story arc, what would it be? Where does the action start? Where does the first hint at a problem start? I know, it's when the cat releases thing one and thing two. Yep, exactly. He releases them and that triggers a whole series of, of events. <laughs> Okay, so now let's talk about the middle part of the arc. That's where the action happens. Why do we picture it as an arc going up and then down? That's because typically, after the incident that starts the story, at first, things get a bit worse and worse until they hit a climax at the top. So you could think of the arc as emotions rising or tension rising up. The closer we get to the climax, the more you are sitting at the edge of your seat and wondering, oh no, how are they ever going to get out of this? How are they ever going to solve this? In the cat in the hat, that's when thing one and thing two are making a mess of the house. The fish keeps saying that it's bad and that they will get in trouble if mom sees a house like this. Yep. Exactly. And then the climax happens when all of a sudden they see mom out of the window and they know she's about to come home and the house is just a terrible mess. So the climax is when things are at their worst. Everything is a mess, everyone is in trouble, and we don't know how they're ever going to get out of it. And then the next part of the arc is the problem solving part. That's the part where the characters are working together towards getting the problem solved. So in the cat in the hat, that part starts with the cat in the hat catching thing one and thing two so that they stop making a mess. So that's the start of the downward slope towards the resolution. By catching thing one and thing two, the cat in the hat makes sure no new mess gets made. At that point in the story though, the kids are still very worried about mom coming home because the house is still a terrible mess even though thing one and thing two are now taken away. Then the cat in the hat comes in. And he starts cleaning like crazy. He uses his hands, his legs, and his tail. It's almost like magic. Yes, and he cleans the house quicker than anyone would have thought possible. He cleans up every single bit of mess that thing one and thing two made until the house is all put together again. Right, so the end of the story arc itself is the resolution. The problem is solved. That's when, as a reader, you can breathe easy again. Phew, they survived. They solved the problem. They got out of trouble. It can really be a, a relief to get to that part of the story. And then usually, just like there was an introduction at the start before the story arc starts, there's a wrap-up phase at the end of the story. So the story doesn't immediately end when the problem is solved. Can you think of what happens in the wrap-up of the Cat in the Hat story? Um, right. The wrap-up is when mom the mom actually comes home. She comes in and asks the children how their afternoon was. Exactly. So the wrap-up is just to make sure all loose ends of the story are neatly tied up but all of the exciting action is done by that point. So there's a lot that we just went over. Let's quickly summarize. So a story starts with an introduction to introduce the characters and set the background. Then the story arc starts with an event that creates a problem. Then there's stuff happening. Events take place, tensions rise, and the story moves up towards its climax. At the top of the arc, the climax is when we are in the middle of the problem, and it's unclear how the characters are going to solve the problem. 
Then the story arc starts moving towards the resolution. So the character starts solving the problem until they get to the resolution. The resolution is the end of the story arc, but there's usually a wrap up to not only end so abruptly, but to end it, but to tie up any loose ends. Okay, so let's work through one more story example. What's a movie one of you saw recently and enjoyed? Incredibles. Does everyone know that movie? Oh, it was a long time ago that I saw that. I can remember that there's a family with superpowers, kind of like our characters actually, but they're a family instead of a group of kids like in our story. But I don't remember the actual story of the movie. So yeah, just like you said, the Incredibles are a family, two parents and three kids, and they all have superpowers. However, they have to keep their powers a secret because people don't like superheroes. The dad loses his temper one day and loses his job. And to make money, he does a one-time mission where he fights a giant intelligent robot called the Omidroid on a remote island. However, he then discovers that the Omidroid is controlled by the villain who created Omidroid to kill all superheroes because he's jealous of them for their superpowers. The dad tries to fight the robot, but gets captured by the villain. Then mom and the two kids come to the island to try and free the dad and fight Omnidroid and the villain who controls him. They all get captured too by the evil villain. The villain then takes Omnidroid to go destroy the hometown of the Incredibles, but the Omnidroid takes control of itself. Meanwhile, on the island, someone helps the Incredibles escape so they can go back to their hometown, and they all work together to stop the Omnidroid. Finally, when they come home, the villain tries to abduct their baby, Jack-Jack, but Jack-Jack discovers his own superpowers and escapes. Okay, so is the inciting event when Dad gets captured by the villain? No, I think it's a bit earlier. Because at that point, Dad is already fighting the Omnidroid, so there is already action and the tension is already rising. Yeah, I think the Dad is already in trouble when he accepts the one-time mission to fight the robot to earn some money. He's, he's supposed to keep it a secret that he has superpowers, so he shouldn't be doing that. Right, so why is he doing that again? Because he needs money and he lost his job. Oh, right. So the event that starts off all the trouble is when dad loses his job because he lost his temper. Exactly. That event kicks off the whole story arc. Okay. So when is the climax? Um, to figure that out, to figure out when the climax is, just let's think. At what point in the story are the characters in the most trouble? It's when the whole family is captured by the evil human, dad and mom and the two kids. And at the same time, the evil human is taking Omnidroid to their hometown and loses control of Omnidroid. That's when the whole story is a big mess. Exactly. exactly. So that's the climax. Right. Okay. And then they start solving everything. So someone helps them escape, and they successfully fight the Omnidroid and save their hometown. Yeah, and then you are at the resolution. Um, they come home, and the dangerous robot is defeated. Right. But then there's still some wrap-up, because they hadn't had the de deal with the vi villain yet. Mm-hmm. So then it's baby Jack-Jack who deals with the villain by discovering his superpower. And then the whole family is home safe, and the baby is now truly part of the family because he also has a superpower, like the rest of them. Yeah, that's what I really love about this story. It's that through all their adventures, the family bonds together, and they are more connected and closer to each other at the end of the story. Wow, I wish real life was like that. How do I know when I'm at the climax in real life and that things are just going to start moving towards the resolution? Okay, so that's a really important point, actually. Real life is sometimes like a story, but often it's not. 
in real life, there isn't always a perfect resolution in which every problem gets solved and everyone feels closer together at the end. I think that's why stories and movies are so popular. It's because they're not like real life. I can go watch a movie and be taken through the entire story arc from introduction to incident to climax to resolution and wrap up all within two hours. Yeah, stories are nice like that, aren't they? And you know, even though life isn't always as simple as a story with a beginning, a story arc, and an ending, we can still learn from stories. Right? Like in The Incredibles, they can only defeat the big robot by all working together. Now that we've covered all of the parts that make up stories, I think we're finally ready to start our first story scenario. Great, I'm so excited. Where's our first story taking place again? The Henry Vila Zoo. It's right here in Madison. I've been there with, before with my family. Me too. Not only is it so fun to visit, but the admission is free, meaning that everyone is able to go as long as they follow the rules. And we've got a special message to welcome you all to the zoo for the story. Okay, so we know the setting is the, Hen the setting is the Henry Vilas Zoo, and we know who each of the characters are, but what's the plot? Um, I have an idea. How about we're taking a school field trip together to the zoo? Yes, and how about we all walk through the entrance and start walking towards the Primmon House, which is one of the first exhibits you see when you walk in. The zoo is buzzing with people, but something's off. There's more commotion than normal. People are shouting, zookeepers are running all over the place, and then suddenly we see it. All of the lemurs that live in the zoo have escaped from their habitats. The trees above us are full of lemurs swinging around. It's nearly impossible for all the zookeepers to catch them. They need help. If the lemurs escape the zoo, they could run into the road. We need to catch them before something happens. I agree, and we need to act fast. You know what? There's no one better for the job than us. Let's all use our superpowers to catch the lemurs. Each of us brings a special talent to the table, so I'm sure we can figure out a solution. Yes, you're right. Let's take two minutes to brainstorm and write down what each of our characters will do in order to catch the escaping lemurs. <laughs> so let's take a short break.
All right, is everyone finished brainstorming? Nope. Yep. Yes. I am finished. So, Sage has a vision that the lemurs were going to get loose, but she was handling another mission at the time. Now that they are out and running loose, Sage would talk to the zookeepers to prevent the lemurs from leaving the zoo because they could potentially cause car accidents if they get in the road. She would attempt to put a large net over them to keep them from exiting the building and then gently lead them home, back to their rightful place. Um, I think Clarion would prefer working with animals or with the animals specifically. They would watch the border of the zoo and prevent them from leaving with their powers, but would use it, um, but wouldn't use it more than that. Otherwise, with directions from the zookeepers, Clarion would work at making sure that the people at the zoo did not accidentally hurt the lemurs or themselves as they helped catch the lemurs. You both had such great ideas. I tried figuring out what my figuring out what my character Jojo would do, but I really can't think of any way that she could help. Her superpower is that no one can say no to her. I feel like it's not very helpful in this situation. It's all right, Madeline. Not every scenario can have a solution. It can be frustrating and feel like things are out of our control, but it's a part of life. Mauro didn't really know what to do either. He felt bad about the lemurs having escaped and about not being able to help, so he turned invisible. But he didn't really catch the lemurs because they're so fast and he can't see them well enough to get close to them fast enough to catch them. Oh, well, how about this? Maybe Jojo isn't able to catch the monkeys by herself using her superpowers. And Mario is just very overwhelmed by the situation too. But maybe if we work together and use... Um, their superpowers as a team, we can think of a solution. That's a great idea. Let's all take a minute to brainstorm how our characters could possibly help Jojo in Maro catch the lemurs. Let's take a minute. Yeah, and if you're watching from home, think as well about how your character would help um, Jojo and Maro. So is everyone ready to share? Yes. What if Mauro climbs up a tree and becomes invisible and then just simply sits in there and wait for lemurs? Because the lemurs won't see him, so they'll run right into his arms if he sits up in a tree. And then maybe Jojo could help getting the lemurs to go to the tree where Mauro is sitting invisible. That's a great idea. Jojo can ask the other zoo visitors to help guide the lemurs to the tree where Mauro is sitting. Everyone can help when Jojo asks. I think that'll work. You both help each other and make a plan that uses your strength. Thanks, guys. Your ideas really helped, and I'm glad, I'm glad we could look, work together to find a solution. Mauro is so proud to have got a lemur, despite not seeing very well at all. But when they basically run into him because he's invisible, they're easy enough for him to catch. Thanks, Jojo. Mauro really couldn't have done it alone. Our superpowers definitely came in handy today to catch the lemurs. Now we can continue our field trip at the zoo. And look, all of the lemurs are back in their habitats again. See, they are playing. Wow. Aren't they fun, the lemurs? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so the zookeeper has a message for us again, too. Now we should quickly wrap, wrap up. All right. Let's hear what the zookeeper has to say. Thank you so much for your help. See you guys next time. Yeah, so as a wrap up, we've talked about the importance of the story arc. The story arc includes the following um, parts, the inciting event, the rising action, the falling action, and then finally, the resolution. These are important concept concepts that we want you to know before we start creating the story in the Madison Zoo. With that being said, we would like for you all to respond to the scenario we created. We are all at the zoo when the lemurs get loose. How are you all going to handle the situation? How are you going to use your characters or our characters to help keep the public safe from the roaming lemurs? How are you going to get the lemur back into its rightful place? Here's some questions to help. First, it's important to check in with your character too. How is your character feeling that day? What can your character do to help safely with their superpower or otherwise? Um, did your character come with anyone else, such as a friend or parent? That might also affect how much you can help catch the lemurs. Also, is your character good with animals like lemurs? Does your character like animals? Do they know what lemurs are and how they act? Something else to think about, how is your character with people? Do they like talking with strangers? Does your character like the mentors, so Maro, Clarion, Jojo, and Sage? We would love to and can't wait to hear all of your ideas. Uh, once again, we're all at the Henryville Zoo in Madison in this story. We have a map of the zoo at the end of the slides to help set the story. Please upload your answers to Google Classroom and be as detailed as possible. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.